Hello, welcome back to Vision Auto Garage. My name's Rob. It's been a couple of months since my last episode, so I wanted to offer a brief explanation to my long-standing subscribers and those of you who have just joined the channel. It's been a difficult journey for me the last few months and has resulted in the decision to end Vision Automotive as my livelihood. I started the workshop two and a half years ago out of my passion for modifying and restoring classic cars. It was always a hobby for me, but the dream was always to make it my livelihood. I believe in chasing down your dreams and giving them everything you can. And I've given everything I could to make Vision Automotive work, physically, emotionally, financially, and I've had huge support from my friends and family, but it just seems it wasn't to be. As sad as it may be to let go of a dream, I have learned a huge amount over the last two and a half years. I've journeyed through success and through failure, but one thing I haven't done is looked back and regretted it. I would have regretted, however, not taking this opportunity and not chasing a dream and seeing what could come of it. For now, I will resign it back to a hobby, but I want to encourage anyone who's thinking of taking a risk or who's branched out and is running their own company or business. Keep going, head down and work hard. Get friends and family around you who support you and want the best for you. And work at it and see where you can take it. Anyway, you didn't come here to watch my round face flapping, so let's get on with some work. And here she is, all dusty and decrepit. We left the project having installed the header tank and worked on the cooling system, and the car has not been touched since, save moving it out of the way. It's amazing how a car can become a really useful storage box. It all needs to be cleaned out and dusted off before I can start. A comment was made on a recent episode that I could remove the centre brace on the slam panel because my radiator mounts were now providing the same support. And rightly so. I removed it by first attempting to undo the 8mm bolts holding it in place and then resorting to a quicker method. Next up I wanted to add a horizontal bar to the rear of the cage, just above the suspension struts. This should give me something solid to work from should I need to further brace the subframe and strut tops. A tube was measured up and cut to length. Placing it in position looks good, but it was now that I realised I was very unprepared for the job and lots of my essential tools were at home, so this tube will have to wait. I also want to install a diagonal tube between the main hoop and this new bar, from the driver's head to the passenger rear. In between episodes, my Emerald K6 ECU has been returned in its upgraded K6 Plus configuration and has a convenient base map for the APX 1.8T installed. Emerald have provided some excellent documentation including a full pinout and a basic circuit diagram which should prove very useful. Now onto the job of wiring up the stock APX engine loom to the Emerald 36 pin connector. I had hoped to remove the engine loom plug cleanly by disassembling it, but soon realised this was a pain and didn't really give me anything for the effort, so it was cut off. With support from members of the Audi TT Mark 1 track car group on Facebook, I have a copy of the wiring schedule for the APX powered TT. I'm going to use it in conjunction with the Emerald documents and my own reference sheet to identify and correctly connect each wire. Emerald use a 36 pin amp connector. When viewed from the rear, which is the side the wires enter, pin 1 is the bottom left and pin 36 is the top right, with the centre row counting from right to left.
Working from the reference sheet I had already started to collate, I'm going to connect the injectors first. According to all of my information, injector 1 should be a purple wire. However, there is more than one purple wire, so each is continuity tested with the injectors to identify the correct ones. This brings into question the accuracy of the wiring schematics for this engine or loom and means each wire will now have to be physically checked. One by one, each wire is identified, cross-checked, continuity checked, stripped, crimped and terminated in its correct pin. Here are the coils, injectors and drive-by-wire throttle valve control all terminated. The emerald diagrams proved essential as they have matched each pin on the sensor connectors to the correct pin on the ECU, meaning their colour is irrelevant. They are all checked with a multimeter to be sure, but it's hard to get it wrong. After a whole afternoon some good progress is made. I am missing a map sensor, which was left on the donor TT in a boost pipe just above the intercooler, and a throttle pedal, but I should have enough connected to at least power on the ECU and get some sensor readings. Success! We have communication. Loading the configuration shows that Emerald have installed a base map from an S3, so I need to proceed with caution and check everything over before attempting to start. Immediately, I can see that my air and coolant sensors have been swapped out with a default value, indicated by the red boxes around their data. I've also got incorrect battery voltage, so I suspect there is an earthing issue somewhere. Oh joy. <laughs> 